Hey friends. Okay, so now we're going to dive into set theory. Now, the nice thing about set theory is the math involved isn't really complicated. Um, where it gets complicated is the vocabulary. There's a lot of vocabulary. There's a lot of um, mathematical shorthand and mathematical symbols that you have to be comfortable with, okay? And that's where you want to spend the majority of your time. A lot of the math involved in this, you're just adding numbers together, um, subtracting a couple numbers. Like it's not big, heavy mathematical items. It's the wording and it's the visualization of it that you really want to practice, okay? Okay, so with that thought, um, that little yellow-ish um, picture that you see there is the logical reasoning stuff, the set theory stuff that's available to you on your formula sheet, okay? So listed to the right are the items you have available on your formula sheet. A set is essentially just a group of items and each one of those items is called an element, okay? And then the elements are related to each other somehow. Elements can be in more than one set at the same time. And so there exists various relationships between the sets as well. Set notation brackets, which are these squiggly little guys, are used to group items in a set together, okay? And sets are often organized into Venn diagrams to help show how they are connected. And we will do lots of practicing with those um, as we go. The universal set is the set that contains all the elements, okay? So it's essentially everything you're talking about for that particular question. Okay, an empty set contains nothing. There's no elements and it's denoted with a zero and a slash through it. Disjoint sets. Disjoint sets are those that have no overlap. Okay. So there's nothing in common between the two sets. So in for those of you who are comfortable with Venn diagrams, you'd end up with a set that's like this and a set that's like that. Those are disjoint sets. There's no overlapping region in them, okay? Um, a is a subset of B. That little symbol there refers to being a subset, okay? Uh, this means that the entire set A is inside set B. So an example of that might be if this is set A and this is set B, you could say that A is a subset of B. Okay, but we can't say that B is a subset of A there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, the intersection, that's this symbol right here. When we say A intersect with B, um, it refers to the intersection of set A and B. This is the overlapping region in a Venn diagram, the region that shows the elements that are in both sets at the same time. This is often the place you need to start with when you're creating your Venn diagram. Okay. Um, this next one is usually, I think, the one that confuses us the most for whatever reason, and it's the union. Um, A in union with B refers to the union of A or B. This means all the elements that are in set A or in set B or in both, okay? And this is where it gets confusing because a lot of kids feel that the union doesn't include the intersection. It doesn't include the, the part that's both, but it does, okay? So it's everything. Okay, the complement of A, um, also noted as A prime, that's what that little tick mark reads, means everything that's not A, okay? Draw these out. Do not try and do this stuff in your head. For everything that you need, draw a little Venn diagram, okay? In the 10 seconds that it takes you to draw the Venn diagram, your accuracy is going to increase tenfold, okay? If you're given a Venn diagram, highlight the region that they're referring to before you're trying to look at your multiple choice options, okay? All right, so here we go. If M is the set of multiples of three, which of the following would be a subset of M? So which would be entirely in set M, okay? Well, the set of the factors of six. Well, let's think about that for a sec. What are the factors of six? We've got one, two, three, and six. Those are not all multiples of three, okay? So that set would not be entirely inside the multiples of three set, okay? The set of multiples of six. Well, what would that look like? That would look like six, comma, 12, 18, 24, and so on. Um, all of those are multiples of three as well, 
okay? Positive odd numbers. Um, well, the very first odd number is one. That's not a multiple of three, so that doesn't work. Positive even numbers, um, two is not a multiple of three, so that doesn't work. So the answer would have to be B, okay? I want you to notice that even though I got to the answer of B, I kept going. I did C and I did D first. It's helpful when you're doing these to prove that the other three aren't answers because it's gonna make you feel better about the answer that you did choose. Okay, just gonna clear that ink. All right, um, okay, so we've got three sets and possible set operations. So set A is all the multiples of five, so that'd be like five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Set B is all the factors of 39. Um, that would be one and three, 13 and 39. And C is all even numbers. So that'd be like two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The two operations that would result in an empty set. Okay. So operation number one is A intersect with B. Okay. A intersect with B. In order for A and B to intersect, I would need a factor of 39 that's also a multiple of five. Well, the factors of 39 were one, three, uh, 13 and 39, none of those are multiples of five. So for sure, that would be an empty set. Operation one, empty. Operation two is A intersect with C. Can I have an even number that's also a multiple of five? Yes, I can. 10, 20, 30, all of those would be both even and multiples of five. Okay, B intersect with C. Can I have a factor of 39 that's also an even number? Well, we just said that the factors of 39 were 1, odd, uh, 3, odd, 13, odd, 39, odd. So it would actually be 1 and 3 would be my answers here. Operation 1 and operation 3. Okay, and a question like this, just before you freak out, uh, a question like this would, would be keyed as 1, 3 or 3, 1. The order wouldn't matter there, okay? All right, <clears throat> so I've got four different sets with a set description. Two of the sets that can produce the intersection three, nine, 15 are what and what, and there's more than one correct answer. Okay, so I would kind of want to unpack this a bit. Instead of looking at just multiples of three between zero and 20, that's hard for me to visualize. So I'm gonna actually write those out. It's going to take me a couple extra seconds, but then my accuracy is going to be much, much stronger, okay? So multiples of 3 between 0 and 20, odd numbers between 0 and 20. Let's just write those out, okay? So I've changed that in my table. Now I have a much better visual. Now I want the intersection 3, 9, and 15. Well, I see 1 uses 3, 9, 15. I see 2 uses 3 but not nine, uh, three uses three, nine, 15, and four uses three, nine, and 15, okay? So I need two sets that would produce the intersection. So I could say one and three, I could say one and four, or I could say three and four. Either one of those would be a perfect answer, okay? And they'd all be keyed correct. Which pair of sets represents disjoint sets? Now remember, these two circles were my example of disjoint sets, so they have no overlap between them, okay? So you're asking yourself, could I get an overlap? As soon as you say no, you found the answer. So could I have a natural number that's also an integer? Yes, for sure I can, right? All natural numbers are integers. Um, B, all triangles and all circles. Could I have an overlapping region that is a both a triangle and a circle at the same time? No, can't be. Okay, so it has to be B. But let's look at C and D. C is all natural numbers and P or N is all natural numbers and P is all positive integers. All natural numbers are positive. So that's, um, they're all overlapping. And then for, N, for D, M is all motorcycles and V is all vehicles. Well, all motorcycles are vehicles. So, um, those aren't disjoint either. So the answer has to be B. Okay. Okay. Students in a particular high school were surveyed to determine the subjects in which they were currently enrolled. 
the table below represents the data that was collected. Okay, now you have the table in your book. Um, I'm probably hiding it right now, but it's right there. Okay, and you have it in your book as well. Okay, the number of students in the universal set. Well, the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a Venn diagram, okay? I've got math only, I've got art only, I've got math and art, and I've got neither course. So I set up my Venn diagram for math and art. I have 28 in math only, I have 33 in art only, I have 17 in an overlapping region, and I have 20 in neither course. So the number in the universal set, I just add up all those numbers and I would get 98, okay? The number of students taking art. Well, what you have to realize there is that 17 are taking art that's in the overlap and 33 are taking art that are only art, okay? So I'd have to add those numbers together and that's gonna give me 50. See, it's way easier when you're staring at the Venn diagram. So always take the time to draw the Venn diagram first. The number of students not taking math. Okay, well, figure that out. Look, uh, these guys are taking math. So this guy's not taking math and this guy's not taking math. So all together, that would be 55, 53, sorry. Can't add in my head. 53 are not taking math. Okay. The number of students taking math or art. <clears throat> Again, be careful with that. That includes math only, that includes art only, and that includes taking both at the same time. So you're going to add up the 28, the 18, and the 33 all together, and that gives you 78. Okay. All right. Good job. Number nine. Sets S and T are represented by the Venn diagram shown. Which of the following statements is true for sets S and T? So the first statement says S is a subset of T. That means S is entirely inside T. That is not true. Um, sorry, I was just having a mouse issue there. That is not true. Um, so I'm going to scratch that guy out. T is entirely inside not S, and that's not true either. Not S would have been like all of this stuff outside here, okay? Um, S and T is an empty set. So S intersect with T is an empty set. That's not true. S intersect with T actually is T, okay? And then S or T is S. That is true because T is a subset of S, right? So T, or S is S, that one is true. So the answer is D, okay. All right, the Venn diagram represents the number of students taking English, math, and art at a particular school. The number of students taking math or English. So math or English would be represented by this highlighted mark that I just did. I'm going to just turn myself off there to make sure you can see it. So what I've done is I've highlighted the English and math all together. Okay, that represents the number of students taking English and math. I need to add all that together. And when I add all that together, I get 60. Okay, so again, it's not the math that's complicated here. You can add those numbers to up in your calculator. It's the visual. You have to understand what math or English means. Okay. All right. There are 35 students in Mr. Hill's homeroom class. Of these students, 20 take science, 21 take math, and five take neither subject. How many students take only math? So what we have to do here is we have to create a Venn diagram. And remember I said at the beginning, you often need to figure out the overlap as your very first number that you put in. What I need you to see here is there are 35 students in the class but 20 and 21 and five, if I add all that together, that gives me 46. That's more than 35. The amount that it's more by tells me what my overlap is, okay? So that tells me I have 11 in the overlap. 
Now that I have 11 in the overlap and I've established that, I go back and I say, okay, 20 takes science. Well, that means this whole circle here has to add up to 20, but I already have 11 taken care of. So the, in the only science section here, there'll be a nine. Then I have 21 taking math, but again, in this whole math circle, I have 11 taken care of. So there'll be 10 taking only math. Now, before I continue with that thought, now take these three, four, <laughs> four numbers, not three numbers, take these four numbers, add them together, and it should equal 35, okay? 10 plus 11 and nine is 20, so that's 10 plus 20 is 30, plus the five not taking either, all of that adds up to 35, so we're good now. And the question was, how many students only take math? So there are 10 students only taking math, okay? Okay, a survey of 50 people was conducted about what type of vehicle they are interested in purchasing next year. The results are shown below. 35 liked SUVs, 20 liked coupes, and six aren't interested in a new vehicle. Determine the number of people who are only interested in purchasing an SUV. Now I want you to look at this question and say, hey, this is like the same question I was just asked with the math and science, okay? I know that altogether, I should only add up to 50. But if I add these numbers up, what do I get here? That's 55, 61, right? So that tells me there is 11 in my overlap, okay? 11 in my overlap, six aren't interested in a new vehicle, so I've got that taken care of. Now, my SUVs have to add up to 35. I already have 11 taken care of, so I have to go 35 minus 11 to put that number here. And I know 20 liked coupes. I already have 11 of that taken care of. So I'd have to go 20 minus 11. That's where the 24 and the nine are coming from, okay? Now, the question said, how many are only interested in purchasing an SUV? Well, now I know that answer is 24. There are 24 people only interested in the SUV, okay? All right, the universal set, of primary and secondary colors in art contains the colors yellow, blue, red, orange, green, purple, and black as shown. R is the set of colors that contain red. Then all the colors in the complement of R, so that's not R or R prime. Okay, well, let's just highlight R for a second. There is all my ones that contain red. So not R would be yellow, green, and blue. They're the things I didn't just highlight, okay? So the answer there would be C. Okay, there are 35 students in John's homeroom class. There are five students who take English and biology, seven who take neither of these subjects. There are three more students taking only English than there are students taking only biology the number of students in John's homeroom who take biology only. Okay, so I have to set this up with a Venn diagram, just like I have been doing. I know that outside of the two circles will be my seven, because there are seven who take neither. And I know that the overlap is five. Okay, so let's put that stuff in. Then what I've done is I've called bio X and English X plus three, because I was told there's three more people taking English, okay? Now I know that those four numbers, the x plus three, the five, the x, and the seven, they all have to add up to the number of people in the class, and that's 35. So I just set myself up to say x plus three plus x plus five plus seven is 35. Now that's two x equals, or two x plus 15 equals 35. I'm gonna bring my 15 over to the other side. That's where two x equals 20 comes from. Okay, I just subtracted the 15 from both sides, and that means x equals 10. Now, 10 represented the people in bi um, biology, and that is what the question was asking. You always want to make sure x is not necessarily your answer, right? We've talked about this in other uh, videos as well. Once you figure out x, you need to say, okay, what does x represent, and then what was the question I was being asked? In this particular uh, question, though, x does represent um, what you were being asked. Okay. Next up, which of the following Venn diagrams illustrates M intersect with N 
is empty. Okay, M intersects with N is empty. Well, in order for the intersection to be empty, there must not be any common uh, things between M and N. So that's going to have to be C. Okay. Awesome. All right. Last uh, sort of question here, but I'm going to ask you a few questions based on this as we go through. So a group of 100 students was surveyed about movies they have seen as shown below. Two people saw all three movies, 12 saw Metal Man and The Princely Groom, 53 saw Metal Man, 10 saw Metal Man and Quick and Angry 8, 18 saw The Princely Groom only, 23 saw The Princely Groom and Quick and Angry 8, and 6 did not see any. Jason started to organize the results in a Venn diagram, and we're going to do the same thing. So you always want to deal with the overlaps first whenever possible. So in a, in a three Venn diagram situation, you need to get all the way to the center and then you want to kind of claw your way out. Okay, super, super important. So the very, very center is all three movies. And we know that's the very first um, statement we were actually made. Two people saw all three movies. So I know I can stick a two right in there. The next thing I want to do is the ands. Now, you have to listen very carefully to this because this is a common issue that kids have. The next statement is 12 people saw Metal Man and The Princely Groom. And what happens is a lot of people say, oh, 12 must go, no, sorry, right up here. 12 must go right up here. But that's not true because this, take a look at what I'm drawing here, that represents Metal Man and The Princely Groom. So that has to add up to 12. I already have two taken care of. So that means I need to stick a 10 in right there. That way it would add up to 12, okay? Okay, then I'm going to forget about the 53 for a second. 10 people saw Metal Man and Quick and Angry 8. That's the next thing I wanna do. So this has to add up to 10. I already have two taken care of, so that's gonna be an eight, okay? Um, 18 saw, I'd like to do the other and, where's the, okay, so 23 saw The Princely Groom and Quick and Angry 8, okay, so I already have two taken care of, so that's going to be 21. Um, I also stuck the 18 in there for The Princely Groom only, because only means it's not part of any overlapping region. Okay, six people didn't see any movies, so there's going to be a six out here, and 53 people saw the metal man, so I know all of this now has to add up to 53. Um, I've got 20 taken care of, so that's going to have to be 33. Okay, now to get this last piece here, I know that all my numbers have to add up to 100, so I'm just going to go 100 minus everything I've got, and that leaves me with 2 for only quick and angry 8. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to answer all the questions. So the number of people who saw the princely groom, well, that would be this 18 plus 10 plus 2 plus 21. Okay, and that ends up being 51. The, okay, sorry, the number of people who saw Metal Man and the princely groom, but not quick and angry 8. So Metal Man and the Princely Groom would be this 12, but then not Quick and Angry 8, I'd have to take away the 2, so that would be just 10. Okay. This right here essentially represents, let me draw that for you. Um, this right here essentially represents Metal Man and the Princely Groom, but has no connection with Quick and Angry 8. Okay, the number of people who saw Metal Man only, well, that's 33. Okay, it's in no part of other circle. And the number of people who saw Metal Man or Quick and Angry 8. So Metal Man or Quick and Angry 8, that's gonna end up being all of this. Okay, so I would add up all those numbers together. And that gives me 76. Okay, so that's it for set theory. Um, 
now you have some uh, a chance to kind of work through some of that extra practice stuff and have some fun on that, okay? We will see you for part four, uh, where we're going to deal with probability, perms and comms, and game theory, okay? Take care, guys. <laughs>